Welcome to the second of five videos exploring the VCU-based design example for Avnet's UltraZ EV Starter Kit. This design example enables hardware-accelerated processing of H.264 and H.265 video available in the EV family of Zinc UltraScale Plus MPSOC devices. In the first video, we reviewed the example design in the project repository, highlighting the Vivado block design and the documentation available to help you start working with this design in your own development effort. In this video, we're going to review the Vivado tickle scripts, the design constraints for this project, and demonstrate how to generate the VCU-based block design in Vivado. So we're actually going to start out generating the VCU-based block design uh, using the tickle scripts. Then while the design is generating in the background, we're going to take a look at the tickle scripts themselves. And then when we're finished doing that, we'll come back and take a look at the completed block design. So uh, in the repository, whether you clone it with Git or download a zip file or tarball, uh, this was what the repository structure looks like. So we want to go down into the RDF folder uh, down under PL, which is kind of the base of the Vivado portion of the design. And we want to go ahead and launch a Vivado tickle shell. So assuming you've installed Vivado, there should be a shortcut uh, for launching a tickle shell, which is right here. And I'm going to bring open a tickle shell. <clears throat> Uh, the commands are documented in working with the, the design scripts, and I've already gone ahead and done those. So we've set our home folder as the, the base of this design, and then we've gone down into the PL folder. And what we're going to do now is we're going to source the top-level project script um, and let Vivado run off and go generate this. So I'm copy and pasting this uh, from, from some additional documentation, but it's Vivado dash source and then the location and name of the top level project script you want to generate. Uh, this is going to go off here and generate. It's going to go launch Vivado. Now, once we see the Vivado splash screen, I'm going to switch over to the Vivado project and it's going to go ahead and start generating the design uh, kind of real time. So we'll let this get started, and then I'm going to switch over to the browser here while this is generating the block design in the background. And we're going to take a look at the tickle scripts. So we'll start here in the root folder of the PL. Uh, there's this readme file that we saw in Windows Explorer. Well, this is out in the repository, uh, just kind of showing you the pretty version of that design document. But this really talks about the structure of the Vivado project. <clears throat> So each, each design in the project is going to have a, uh, a design module name. So this one is the VCU, um, and that's housed under the script folder, and that's the top-level design generation script for the project. And then there's also a, another design script associated with the board. So the project sets up the part um, and any kind of information about the board you're, you're running. And then the board file actually has all of the specifics about the IP blocks, how they're connected to each other, the processor configuration, and everything like that. Then there's a constraints folder uh, for design constraints used in the generation of the block design. And then there's also a sources folder, which you'll see is not actually present in this release because we don't use any custom IP modules. But that's there as a placeholder because other design examples do use custom IP blocks. And so the VHDL for those blocks will be included in the sources folder. Uh, folder is not contained in the repository. Each design module, the script will generate a folder um, in, this, in this folder structure for that design module where all of the artifacts of the build will go. And then there's a little documentation here on how to use the tickle scripts. So you want to set a TRD home variable uh, to the path, the base path, and then you want to go down under the PL folder. And then you want to source the uh, top level project script for the design module you want to generate. And so it's pretty easy to get started with the Vivado piece of this design. So let's take a look at that top level project generation script first. Um, so down under the PL folder, scripts UZ7EV, there's VCU, VCU underscore proj underscore UZ7EV cc.tickle. So this is the top level project script. And what's important about this is this sets up the platform name and your silicon revision. So um, coming from the ZCU-106, this was brought over to the Ultra ZEV. Um, sets up your project directory structure. You define the actual part that's on your board here. Um, and then you actually also define the, the board property. So this is the Avnet Ultra Z uh, carrier card that the SOM is plugged into. So that stuff is all set up in your top level script. And then what happens here is um, this top-level script will actually source the board script as part of the as part of the process. So it's going to go pull that in, the correct board script for that design. 
So next, let's take a, take a look at the, uh, the board script itself. <clears throat> so in that same scripts folder, there's a VCU underscore BD instead of the proj. And this is for the, the actual design definition. Um, so there's a couple of things to highlight in here. I'm going to start and scroll down here to the first important part. Uh, so the first important thing in this document is there's a section here that's going to check and make sure that you have uh, available in Vivado and licenses for all the proper IP blocks. So it's going to do an IP check here. So it's going to look for the clock wizard, constant, the concatenation block, system reset, the VCU, your slice, processor subsystem, and Axie GPIO. So it's going to make sure all of those are available and accessible before it goes any further to generate the block design. Then um, if you watch the first video, we overviewed that it's a hierarchy. The design is set up in a hierarchy with the processor subsystem as its own block. And then that block is used in the top level design to kind of make the block design a little bit cleaner at the higher level. So uh, what this tickle script is going to do first is it's going to create that hierarchical cell for the processor subsystem. And so here at line 167, you see that's where that's defined. So this is going to go generate the processor subsystem block. Um, you'll see there's some kind of logic here. And we've added some documentation in here to kind of highlight from the TRD design, which Axie port connections were brought over. So, uh, so this design is set up to scale then to other design modules coming over from the Xilinx TRD. So um, you can use any Axie ports, but these are set up the same way. So it's easy to bring other designs in with this as a base from the TRD, use the same clock connections. And then we brought over three Axie GPIO block connections from the base uh, designed for the Ultra Z board to bring over the onboard push button, the dip switches, and the LEDs. Let me scroll down a little bit further here and show you. Uh, this is where the Zinc Ultra Scale Processor Subsystem is instantiated. And if you look through here, there's a lot of information here, but this is what configures the processor. So it selects the interfa interfaces, uh, any parameters for those interfaces that you can configure, uh, voltage standards, um, you know, speeds, configuration for modes, things like that. Also configuration of the DDRs in here. And uh, this is there's actually a lot of information here, but this is the processor configuration is handled in this tickle script. And we're going to scroll down past here uh, a little bit further down into the 1700s. So. This closes out the processor config. It's going to go create all the connections for that lower level processor block. And then um, the second function in here is to go and create the root design. So this is the top level design that instantiates the processor subsystem and connects it to the rest of the design. And that's where this part of the script. So this is going to go through and, uh, and generate all the top level design blocks, connect everything together. And then that'll be your complete block design for this, this reference implementation. So the third component besides these two scripts uh, of this example design is actually constraints file. And you'll see in the project repository uh, under PL, there's a constraints folder. And this XDC file is the constraints file that's used in this design. And there's only one constraint, and that is where the top level clock comes in. So you set the package pin um, for the clock on the Ultra Z uh, EV board. And this is how that's defined in this constraints file. And that way it knows uh, which pin the, the clock is coming in on. And then one thing that I wanted to highlight here, um, again, is that how to get all of this information. You can do this from the release notes page in the project repository, which I've done. If you just want to download a zip file or a tarball, you can also go up to the top level project repository and uh, clone this from GitHub. I'm sorry, GitLab. So clone with SHA, SSH or HTTPS. So now that we've taken a look at all of those scripts, let's go back here and uh, take a look at the block design and see if this is finished being generated. And it is. So the design is completed. Let's take, take a look at our tickle shell real quick. So um, tickles, the tickle shell has generated the uh, kicked off the process to generate the block design. And then we, we have a completed block design here. Um, so let me detach this, maximize it here in the window. And we'll, we'll do a little zoom in so you can see. So there's our MPSOC subsystem block we were talking about in the tickle script. It's got Axie GPIO connections. 
we've got our interconnect here to the VCU, our clock wizard. And you can see this hierarchy. You can go here and actually expand it. I'll zoom back out in Vivado. And that shows you all the insides of that uh, MPSOC subsystem hierarchy block. And so all the connections flow through. If you want your top level design kind of clean, you can collapse that. And now you've got the block design. Uh, you can follow the rest of the documentation in the repository to go and finish generating a bitstream. But you can actually click on generate bitstream here and uh, tell it OK, and it'll go ahead and, and build your, your complete Vivado design that you can go pull into a Petal Linux build. So that concludes this video. Hopefully this overview was helpful, uh, getting you started generating the block design in Vivado, and uh, especially useful if you're interested in customizing this design example for your project. Um, if you continue with this video series, the next one is going to show you about working with the video decoder and the onboard DisplayPort interface. Thanks for watching.